Welcome. Welcome to the Calexico City Council, Calexico Redevelopment Successor Agency, Calexico Financing Authority, regularly meeting agenda. Um, we're going to start with our closed session part of the meeting. Um, a lot to do today, so um, City Clerk, can you please take note of our attendance? Mayor Rosado? Here. Mayor Pacheco is absent. Councilmember Escobar is absent. Councilmember Hodge? Here. Councilmember Bell? Here. Thank you. What we'll do is that we'll open um, closed session to be able to meet at the back room and eventually, I guess, if the council members show up, which looks like Mr. Escobar is showing up now, it is 5.37 and uh, we have now the presence of Mr. Escobar. Um, closed session agenda, uh, public comment not to exceed three minutes. This is the time for the public to address the city council on closed session items only. The mayor will recognize you, and when you come to the microphone, please state your name and place of residence for the record. While members of the public are encouraged to participate, it is unlawful to disturb or delay the council meeting with personal or slanderous remarks. The city council is prohibited by state law from taking action or discussing items not included on the printed agenda. Please direct your questions and comments to the city council. Without further ado, we shall adjourn then to closed session. Thank you. We will be back. Can you remove it? Uh. Welcome. Welcome to the Calexico City Council, Calexico Redevelopment Successor Agency, Calexico Financing Authority regular meeting agenda. This is the Fernando Nenes Council Chambers, 608 Hebrew Avenue. It is Wednesday, December the 6th. Our regularly scheduled meeting is starting a little bit late, but that's okay. It's 645 and City Clerk. Um, if you could please start with the roll call. Mayor Rosado. Here. Mayor Pacheco. Here. Councilmember Escobar. Here. Councilmember Here. Here. Thank you very much. Um, we shall start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance and um, our team captain from our school, if you'd like to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. And identify them. You guys all look the same. Next item on the agenda is an invocation by Pastor Frank Sasueta from the Christ Community Church from Calexico. Please stand. Good evening. Let's, let's stand. Well, welcome here tonight, and Lord bless you all. We're going to ask the Lord to bless this gathering here tonight. Father in heaven, first of all, God, your word tells us that it pleases you that you are blessed to uh, see when your people are gathered together in unity. And God, tonight, that is clearly sensed here tonight. God, I'm so grateful to see young men and women from Vincent Memorial, Lord God, uh, just the unity that is uh, amongst them. God, may that be true of this city as well and their citizens, Lord. God, we ask your blessing here tonight, Lord God, that you would give wisdom, grace, and God, certainly, Lord God, that uh, we would hear from you as well. So bless this gathering tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. At this point, uh, we did have closed session before this regular uh, public session. Um, if we have a report from our legal department. Thank you, Mayor. City Councilman in closed session on the two items. We did receive direction on one of the first items, and uh, but no reportable actions were taken at that point in time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to quickly uh, introduce the, the staff that we have here, and you can understand what we have as, as our team here on the dais. Uh, we have our interim city manager. He will start his uh, interim service to the city as city manager, uh, Mr. David Dale. He is our gentleman all the way there to my right. Um, hello. <laughs> our city manager that will be leaving the city of Calexico on the 15th of December, Mr. Armando Villa. And then we have our uh, representative, our legal representative of the Best Best and Krieger um, Law Corporation, Mr. Carlos Campos. You have a very familiar face here, um, <laughs> uh, an alumni of your school, 
and our, one of our newbies on our council, his name is uh, Jesus Escobar, probably doesn't need to be introduced. Um, we also have here next to me our um, senior uh, council member, Mr. Pacheco. Uh, Mr. Pacheco was a um, principal himself, understands the educational system quite a bit. Next to him is our uh, millennial of the group, uh, Mr. Councilman Real. He helps us with a lot of our you know, understanding of social media. And then we have um, our thespian of the group that's going to assist us today to have a little skit for you today. We're going to go through um, a little bit of, uh, of normal, everyday business stuff for ourselves because these are business meetings. But um, we also want to have a little bit of fun in these kinds of things that happen as far as a community. I'm sorry? I'm sorry? Oh, and I'm the mayor. <laughs> yeah. I'm Marie Turtado, thank you. <laughs> and I am very proud to be your mayor today. Calexico is very, very fortunate to have a, a unique community, and we have many students, um, young students, adult students, and we have the um, exposure as, as the leaders and the decision makers for Calexico to get to see all these different kids and what they're doing. And, and we keep seeing these CIF winnings and, and out of you know, all these different kids that are growing up here in this community on the border. It is different. It is a different life. Uh, it's a small town, and, and what's going on in, in this win to me personally, having had my children in, in this school as well, is to know that, that you're an underdog, underdog <laughs> just like we are, uh, as a team. And I want to be able to show that to you with the skit that we're going to do to kind of let you understand that teams like yourselves that are considered the underdogs and work, have to work that much harder, um, you're not perfect. You have imperfections. But that's what makes you grow so much is when the team really comes out is when you begin to see you have a focus. And, and it's not in government where you don't find that not happening, where it's really hard to be a team. But today we decided to do something unrehearsed, unrehearsed, and hopefully it works out pretty good. So everyone's here, right? Okay, so um, where did Mr. Escobar go? Okay, um, is there anybody that knows? Okay, I think he went to the restroom. I gotta go talk to him really, really quick to get him out here, because he was a little shy. Um, Mr. Escobar is, is, again, a very um, intelligent gentleman. He was elected, I believe you were first, and he was second in the campaign. We all consider him a smarty. Um, he probably was, during the time he was at your school, he drove the nicest cars, uh, wore, the, <laughs> wore the nicest clothes, and he still does. And so he's still a very smarty, good-looking individual, so it's not difficult to work with him. Um, but he's highly successful, and he's doing something now, with a new team that he probably played sports like you did back then. So we're not anything different to you. Oh, I think I see him out there. Let me go talk to him real quick and I'll be right back. Well, uh, Please, man walks into the bar and he says, no. <laughs> Lively it up. <laughs> I better not. <laughs> Your jokes are for after nine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what? Another cup. Can you hear me? No. Testing, testing. I don't know. I'm lost. I'm lost. No, she's 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 taking the lead on everything. She's Sister Lupita? Us. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Sister Lupita. Um Mr. Scovar's shy. He doesn't want to come out. What? But, um, but you know, I know you're kind of like a little worried because I know that we've been talking about, you know, that problemita, you know, the, the problems on your street and the fact that we have all these roads closed around your school. I know, you're, I know you've been talking to me about that and I promise we're going to fix those streets as soon as possible, sister. We've always had a great relationship with your school, but something's going on here with Mr. Escobar. He's like, he's like, he's, he's got these new glasses and, and he's like shy because he was just a cool kid back then. But I came up here to, to talk to him a little bit and, and tell him that you're out there and we got to do 
for your school, no matter if he's shy or not. He's city council, he's city council now, and he's got to do this, right? All right, we're going to fix those things for your school real soon, too. Okay, sister, just, just help me out. And then let's support, let's support our new member in our city council that not only represents the city, but represents your school. Okay, here we go. I convinced him. He's, he's such a shy band. I mean, after so many years of graduating from Vincent, gone to the best colleges, I guess. You know, I, I, guys, you know, that look to me, does anyone know who Rick Perry is? That, that look? <laughs> looks, looks like... Are you going to do Dancing with the Stars now? <laughs> hey, just remember, Rick Perry, okay, guys? But Rick Perry. I, I like looks look, like though. Rick Perry. I think that that's what Rick Perry did, isn't it, what he did? Mm. He actually put some, some glasses on to make him look smart, smarter. Smarter. <laughs> Maybe that's what's going on. Hope not, because, you know, even though you're our newbie, you're very, very prepared for this job. So let's go ahead and show, then, our, our, our visitors here how the underdog qualifies for this. And this is what we're going to do today, the decision that the council must undertake as a team of what it is that we have to take into consideration with every single different personality we have, um, what everybody gives to this team. So, usually when we have something to decide, the chair like myself, I'm going to discuss the agenda item, and today's agenda item is that we're going to have to decide if this underdog does qualify for this beautiful key to the city. So usually what I do is I give each of my council members an opportunity. I'm sorry, I was a little sick, so I'm a little shy, <laughs> um, short of breath. Um, I'm going to give each of my council members an opportunity, just like any chair in a meeting. And we're going to go one by one, and you're going to learn a little bit about each one, okay? And because I can't talk very much because I've been a little sick, and I had to get an injection yesterday, I made myself some cool signs, okay? And that's going to help me to tell you my feelings when I'm going through all of this, because I'm an emotional creature. I'm female. And I can't, I can't help it, especially working with my favorite gentleman of all time. So um, we're going to go ahead and then take some seriousness here and to make into this decision. I'm going to talk a little bit as, as a chair needs to speak. So gentlemen, we have before us the decision to uh, dialogue and discuss and make the decision today, which is it uh, the, the qualifying factors, gentlemen, uh, we might not need legal, we might not need any of this administration. This is something here that we have to decide because this decision here of this key is the ultimate thing that you can do for, for a school like this. So the proposal came from the former mayor, John Moreno, to this mayor here present before you today. And I would like to rec recommend to this council to help me out and give their best input. Uh, so I will start to my left. Mr. Councilman Real, what is your input? Theory, we need to decide who is the underdog. <laughs> okay. Well, um, that was helpful. He's the millennial. He has a lot of, uh, of, of, of us all, even though uh, I'm not too far from him, but um, we, we can count on him. He knows uh, exactly all about Facebook, CD, um, and uh, has all the best amount of, of likes on Facebook. So from there, then, what we could do, we've got our newbie right here, then we have right now our, um, our favored, most wisdom-filled um, council member we have, and we expect him to get us out of what he has to offer for us, because we're not newbies. He may be and he may be, but we go to him for the wisdom. So, Mr. Pacheco, what is your um, input? Give me your two cents worth. No, he's the millennial. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So then, 
Okay, so then, so we haven't really been able to make a decision. We, we want to be a team because everybody's opinion counts, right guys? Your, your opinion of your coaches, opinion of your parents even. Your parents don't play with you, but everyone's going to come in and give you their opinion. But the decisions are in your team, right? Okay, so we're going to move on to the next one. Mr. Hodge was a teacher also at Clesco High School, and Mr. Hodge is considered one of our colorful um, council members. Uh, Mr. Hodge is the thespian and, and is the one that inspires these kinds of things for us crazy people to do. But um, he has his own style, and we love him for that. But sometimes the way he wants to handle things are a little different, but it's important for you to know how he wants to do this because this is what you got to deal with in American politics nowadays. Mr. H Mr. Hodge, what is your um, say in this kind of situation? I mean, how could we, how could we as a team negotiate, I mean, you know, sister's mad at me and, and all of us, because we haven't fixed those streets around the school. we got to do something here. What do you think we should do? <laughs> Madam Mayor, we're going to make them an offer that they can't refuse. Can you say that again? We're going to make them an offer that they can't refuse. I, I forgot. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that that's probably what we want to do, guys. Um, we, we haven't really um, been too aggressive lately. That's probably why we've been staying out of the news lately. And that's where we want to stay. We're doing, we're doing pretty good. We're looked at as an underdog also in, by our peers in, in the council world of representation because we also have to fight real hard for our community. And, and that makes it even more important when you have people like um, our newbie here, uh, the, the slick uh, Rick with the new glasses. Um, but you know, we were a little concerned about you, okay? Because the preparation you received in this school, um, you should come to these meetings on time. Be here, do not leave, because we, 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 we are on strict schedules. As a matter of fact, we need to hurry and finish this now. That is my job here because I have other things I do. I'm thinking about everything. I'm doing my shopping list right now while I'm thinking. Um, but in your case, um, I think it's really important to, to explain to us why today, when this is your school, you walk away. i got to go get you. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, in your case, what would you be giving to this? Because right now, it's not looking good for you. Don't be Especially shy. With those glasses. Mm, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah, um, gentlemen, um, I believe that uh, we're probably going to need maybe one more round of, of opinions. I, I heard you, I heard you, I heard you, but you know, I think I like Hodge. What do you guys think? Hodge, can you give us your opinion again, please? What do you think we should do? Madam Mayor, I've told you before, I'll say it again. So this guy at the end can understand, you know. I think we should make him an offer that they can't refuse. All right, Vincenzo sleeps with the fishes. I don't know, I have an idea what that means. <laughs> okay guys, thank you so much, that was it. Well, the important thing today was is that I really didn't even need to do this because when I found out that as a mayor, it is actually my, my privilege, my honor, and my full responsibility to be able to do this. But of course, I need my team to do this. And so for me as a person and having had my children in this, um, in this system as well, I, I totally appreciate the fact that uh, even though have got to separate um, church and state, but um, we all want a good upbringing. And I know that this council is blessed with the, uh, having been touched by this uh, educational system that we have that's producing not only winners, but very educated, highly educated winners and future leaders of Calexico. Yes. So really want to give um, my thanks to you guys for going along with that and giving me a fun opportunity because really this was something that I knew that we were all going to support you all. We want you all to know that, that team building, it happens every day and it happens in this place too. And it's never easy, but we love our jobs and I know you love your schools, so you do it because that's what you do. That's what you do when you're the underdog. So congratulations to everybody. Thank you, Sister Lupita. Thank you to all the administration. Thank you to everyone here for supporting these kids um, because that's what it's about. So thank you for the opportunity. And <laughs> and what we're going to
going to do now is provide the opportunity to anyone that would like to come up, and I believe there's a coach that would like to say a few words. And we'll do that, and then after that, we'll have your comments of your students, some nice pictures, and we'll go from there. A lot of people, kids. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor, Councilman. Hi. Vincent Memorial Football Team has, was founded in the year 2000 by an ex-alumni, Jaime Santos, and by sister, Jaime Lilia Santos. Barba, then principal of Vincent Memorial Catholic High School. After 14 years, in 2014, we reached CIF Division V finals and came up with the second place. Three years later, in 2017, we conquered Manzanita League and we ranked number one in Division Five, therefore making CIF playoffs. Because of our players' discipline, hard work, and dedication, our team made it to the finals. We are happy to say that we made school history by winning the CIF Division Five championship, defeating Crawford High School 45-3. We want to take this opportunity to thank the Calexico Unified School District for their support in leading us, loaning out their field, and for helping them paint our practice field. We also want to thank the city of Calexico for all their support. It is our honor to represent the city of Calexico in the CIF State Championship as the Imperial Valley and San Diego section winners. Vincent Memorial Catholic High School is proud to receive this great recognition from the city of Calexico. We assure you that we will try our best to bring the trophy of state champions to our great city of Calexico. On behalf of Sister Lupita Hernandez, coaches, cheerleaders, football team, and parents, we want to thank you. Go Scots! Thank you, so, thank you so much. Now we have two brave souls that want to say something to their teams. We'll start with Alejandro Poza. Good evening. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my team for uh, taking me this far. And uh, as a senior, thank you for those who are uh, juniors, sophomores, and freshmen for helping us, seniors, achieve the CIF championship. And first off, I'd like to ask the city council to, uh, if we could, if they could donate the f baseball field in front of the <laughs> Vincent, <laughs> in front of Vincent, I'm or for him. at least help us uh, renovate our field. That's it's our been a waste. hard year practicing in our field. It's uneven. <laughs> There's no grass. <laughs> no lights. You're actually standing right next to the right guy. Actually, that's so tough. Come on. That's how you get tough. In about 10 days. You got to win two championships. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, that's, that's all I like to say. Thank you. Okay, next gentleman, Emiliano Cueva. Hola, buenas noches. Eh, yo no vengo a pedirles nada. Yo no más, <laughs> yo no más vengo a agradecerle a todo mi equipo. Primero que le quiero agradecer es a mi staff de coaches, que son los mejores coaches que he tenido en toda mi vida. Y luego quiero agradecer a Sister que nos apoyó con todo lo que necesitamos y pues por organizar este equipo. Pues yo les quiero dar muchas gracias a mis coaches porque no solo nos formaron a ser un gran equipo, también nos formaron a ser esta familia que es Scots. Y pues quiero darles muchas gracias por eso. Y pues muchas gracias por venir aquí. Thank you so much. Now we're going to give an opportunity to the council members that I believe that uh, our resident, uh, uh, Mr. Rick, um, would like, I mean, Rick Perry. Mr. Escobar would like to be the honored uh, council member here to address you first. 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, sisters, blessed be God. Jóvenes, antes de que me regañen, ¿no? Empezando bien. Ya te regañé yo. Eh, enhorabuena, muchas felicidades. Eh, les voy a contar una anécdota por qué deben de estar muy orgullosos de lo que están haciendo. Yo salí de la Vincent, me gradué de la Vincent, a penitas de panzazo, en 1991. <risa> Había dos profesores en 1990 que estábamos un grupo de amigos, 16, 17 años. Un profesor es Víctor Carrillo, ya no está. En, en la escuela, el otro sí lo van a conocer, tenés Jack O'Bell y alias el Jake. <risa> eh, y es, empezó a platicar de fútbol americano, y que los Chargers, y los Cowboys, y los Tigres, bla, 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 bla. El punto de la historia es que empe, eh, empezó a decir, ¿por qué, no te, ¿por qué nunca se ha promovido un equipo de, de fútbol americano? 1990. Éramos 5 o 6. No recuerdo qué le dijo, pero Víctor Carrillo con Jake a un lado de él, Empezamos carrilla uno por uno. No recuerdo lo que le dijo a los otros, pero recuerdo lo que me dijo a mí. Y me dijo dos puntos. Uno, con todo respeto, cabrón, que así ya en ese entonces ya nos llevamos bien. Cabrón, si llegas medio de la tarde a la escuela, ¿cómo vas a llegar a, 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 a práctica o al juego a tiempo? O sea, sí, cierto, nunca, era muy impuntual. Disciplina, número uno. Hey, no me ayudes. <risa> Disciplina. Y la segunda que me dijo a mí, oye, te, 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 te rompes una uña y estás llorando, ¿cómo vas a jugar fútbol con los trancazos que te meten? Entonces, a lo que voy, disciplina y mucho honor. A lo que le han llevado a la Vincent, a que ahorita tengan este equipo tan grande y tan valioso que le están dando mucho orgullo, tanto a la Vincent, como ustedes como equipo, como a la ciudad de Caléxico. Así es. Muchas veces nos olvidamos que Caléxico sí tiene otra prepa, high school. Entonces, me, me orgullece, obviamente porque soy alumno o exalumno, pero porque la verdad están poniendo a la Vincent en el mapa cuando antes ni los veíamos. Entonces, muchísimas felicidades, muchísima suerte, cuídense mucho y ahí vamos a estar para apoyarlos el sábado. Pacheco. You went 11 and 2 regular season. You lost two games, and you were 3-0 and in the league. That was almost a perfect year for you guys. When I saw Mr. Wong in the summer, he told me, Mr. Pacheco, we have a harder schedule this year. We're playing some of the larger schools. We're playing Calexico and, and El Centro, but we're going to be ready for them. My son tells me that Christopher was weightlifting with a group of boys, Julio y Agosto. The school doesn't start. Your September is when school starts, and you were out before September getting your things done, getting prepared for your season. That takes dedication and a willing to win, uh, a willingness to win. That that says it all. Estaban listos ya para jugar en en septiembre. Congratulations to all the coaches, the coaching staff. And to the boys, defensive and O-line, I mean, it's, it's the whole team, <laughs> offense and defense that makes the team. Congratulations. And Saturday, I think we have a game. Just Congratulations. We'll be praying. What a great, great season. Okay, no, Mr. Real, no, can you can you no. input? No, but, I'll say but no CD, okay? No ahead. CD this time. No, you go ahead. Okay. Bueno, pues um, igual aquí eh, hablan español. <laughs> eh, quiero felicitarlos a todos. Yo sé que uh, esto no lo aprendieron jugando Madden nomás hasta las 3 de la mañana, que me imagino que también lo hicieron. Pero uh, see, me imagino que, los, helps, right? <laughs> me imagino que los coaches y, y todos juntos the lograron the este este CIF Championship y, y, y pues también con Dios que estuvo con ustedes. Eh, yo, yo no me gradué de Vincent, pero sí fui a la Olga y, y de ahí uno de los, una de las razones por qué me fui a Calexico High School, bueno, a Army Navy Academy en Carlsbad y luego uh, me gradué de Calexico High School, fue porque no tenían deportes en esos tiempos. Eh, y, y pues la verdad me da mucho gusto que en el poco tiempo que tienen eh, los Scots eh, en, 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 en fútbol han llegado a, a un nivel muy alto. Um, quiero también, quiero también uh, 
eh, cambiar poquito el tema y se puede decir pedirles un perdón. Eh, yo sé que desafortunadamente la ciudad de Calexico ha desamparado mucho, a, a, siento yo, a Vincent Memorial, que no lo han aceptado 100% como un, eh, una high school de Calexico. Eh, sé que soy Bulldogs, pero también uh, uh, tenemos que como Calexico ser, saber que tenemos otra high school en Calexico. Eh, con eso mismo también pedirles un perdón porque desafortunadamente en el pasado eh, comentó uno de los jugadores eh, y gente aquí presente que me han, me han sentado a decirme por qué la ciudad de Calexico no nos apoya con el, con el baseball field que está enfrente. Eh, lo hemos visto y sí cabe un football field ahí y lo podemos trabajar. Yo quiero decirles que eso es algo que en el momento, cuando me lo pidieron, no tuve el apoyo de, de mis colegas aquí para hacerlo. Lo traje, pero igual, aquí ocupas tres personas para hacer algo. No somos una persona solas. Espero que con esto nos hayan dejado claro a la gente acá arriba que Vincent Memorial está aquí para quedarse como un CIF uh, contender y que la ciudad los apoye al 100% que sí son otro uh, uh, high school en la ciudad de Calexico y, y que los tenemos que ayudar igual como si fuera la Calexico High School. Y yo les quiero brindar ese apoyo, espero que mis colegas también y, y pues gracias, a, gracias que no trajeron las novias porque no hubieran cabido, pero gracias. <risa> Last but not least, our colorful Mr. Thespian of our... Godfather. Council. The Godfather. Um, you can use your normal voice. I don't play football. We know. We know. No. <laughs> um, as an educator, I feel very proud, and Christopher Wong, former student of mine. Um, That's right, Chris. And uh, this is a great day for all of you. It's... Um, enjoy it. Relish it. It... Uh, it doesn't come around very often, times like this. But what does it prove to you? It proves that each and every one of you have character, have discipline. Because as an educator, we're sitting up here and, and, and remembering all the hard work you, you do out on the field, right? But you also have to do all your hard work academically. Right. And uh, that's, that's very challenging. So what type of individual are you? You're a winner. You are a winner, and whatever your dreams are, never give up on them, because you've proved to yourself that you're winners, and that you can pursue anything you care for, because of your heart, your mind, your will, your determination. So uh, I bless you, I thank you uh, for your hard work and making this city feel proud. So thank you very much. When our staff first received your lists of the individuals that we wanted to congratulate, it was pretty long, and um, we weren't sure if we would be able to cover with the two fours we would need to cut to have all the sheets of everything to be printed to give everyone an individual certificate, because you're about 175 people that need to be thanked. But that was going to be logistically in impossible, so we didn't get that done, but we did this up here to make sure that you all saw that we want to make sure that everyone's taken into consideration, the cheerleaders as well, because I know they're back there, Kinari, my little Sodinita, where's she at? Um, but I also want to tell you that um, I did have a daughter and a son that played sports for you, and, um, and it was an amazing experience. I was probably the loudest um, um, team mom you ever had, um, and I'm self-employed, so I was everywhere. Um, but my, my daughter always told me something that he, she herself, she's such a hard worker, she's a third year, I'm sorry, fourth year uh, student graduating this year from UCI, and having had her education helped me a lot to, to make sure that she was taken care of spiritually and educated too. But her words to me, this 16-year-old kid would always tell me, Mom, I'm a student first. And I think that that's probably the most important thing is not to lose focus of that either. We're going to love you guys for what you've accomplished, but don't forget, you got to get that uh, degree first. Okay? So let's do the formalities of some nice picture taking. We're all going to come down here. Those of you that want to come up to the formality of the picture, sister, of course, and, and those that have pre-selected and predetermined will come up here, take those pictures, and then after that, you're welcome to stick around. We'll take a little break and... Um, Mayor, yes, sir. may I um, just uh, make a comment? Yeah. I would like to, before we get into all the celebration, and, and, and 
I would like to give direction, if I have another council member to give direction for um, acting city manager or Armando Villa, that's still acting city manager, direction to start the conversation with the staff on allowing them to be able to use this field for next year. I'll second that. We could do that if we do it as a skit again. How's that? That was fun. That's fine. That was fun. I like deciding about do spending have, money that way. Do we have cons- do I have a second? You I'll have a second. You have a second, sir. Yes, you do. We have Thank lots you of guys. seconds out here, right? Thank you, guys. Way to go. That is the way we got to do business. Level feel for next year. Level feel for next year. All right. Thank you. 
Thank you. Did Amy help with the cheering? Did Amy help with the cheering? It wasn't a family. She's helping Napa. She's a teacher. Oh, she's working? She's in the second year. Napa teaches. She's teaching third grade. and thank you so much for your time. That was a great experience. But we got a little excited and we uh, skipped a little step here, which is the approval of today's agenda. So move. Uh, uh, Mayor, just one more note on the agenda. The item under number six, uh, number 16, discussion regarding Town Center and Industrial Plaza, that item, um, since it's uh, related to a, a pending claim with the city, we'll bring that back next meeting under closed yeah. session. I'm sorry, um, the city manager was speaking to me. Do you mind repeating that again, please? On uh, word counts. Item number 16 on tonight's agenda, since that item deals with a claim the city has received, we'll be hearing that at the next council meeting under closed session. Oh, okay, number, item number 16 is being tabled, you're saying? Okay. Yes. Or, 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 or. Continued to it's gonna go to closed meeting. session, Madam Mayor. Okay, so we'll be addressing item 16 yeah. today. So anyone who has comments, because I do believe that I have one Person Ben Horton, I believe, for comment on that item. What do we tell Ben Horton? Save it for next time. All righty. Okay, so I, I put that to side already. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Campos. Um, may I then have the, uh, after that clarification, approval of the agenda with that elimination? So moved with, uh, make a motion to approve with, uh, not a table, it's a continuance to the uh, next uh, agenda. 
Do I have a second? second? First by Mr. Real, second by Mr. Hodge. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item N. Agenda approved. Okay. Um, we all made comments today because it was a little special and uh, we probably took up a little bit of our time that we usually use for the general stuff we talk about at this stage. You guys want to go over that again or are we okay just by having being that this is uh, Mr. Villa's um, last public meeting uh, scheduled regularly because we can always have a special uh, and keep him busy in a meeting. Um, we do have a, a festivities to, to go through at the end of this meeting. Um, we'll probably kind of go through all of this uh, and not necessarily rushed, but a little quickly because we've taken a little bit of time with the other staff because we also want to celebrate uh, some other um, stuff that we want to do too tonight. As you can see, we have um, some goodies for everybody. So please uh, stay with us and, and be able to do that. Uh, Mr. Villa, uh, it is your time if you like um, to make some comments unless the council wanted to say anything important beforehand. I'm, I'm fine, Madam Mayor. I just want to say that Mariachi is not here yet, so we got some time. You can look for it on CD. Oh. We can, yeah, okay. So, Mr. Via, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor and members of the council. I didn't have a, like a huge speech, but I do wanna, wanna thank you very much uh, for the, you know, the last couple of years. I think, um, you know, it's been, it's been uh, extremely challenging, as you know, and the public knows, but it's been really rewarding for me professionally and personally to have had the opportunity to, to, um, work in the city, be part of the city, and, and, and be part of the transformation that, uh, that we become. I think um, I, I'm taking with me a lot of positive thoughts, and, and um, I'm really grateful that you gave me the opportunity to work with you, and I'm really grateful that, you, that you've made very sound decisions over the last year, and, and that you've made the right decision with Mr. Dale. Um, you know, we, we uh, I think our position here in the city to be the number one city in the valley, uh, if we all work together and, and work collaboratively, um, there's no reason why the city shouldn't be the number one city. I said it once, I said it before, and I kind of continue to say it. Uh, so I'm just really thankful and grateful uh, for you to give me that opportunity. And um, I, don't, I don't have very much more to say, and thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Villa, so much. I know there's a lot to say and that we've said a lot together amongst ourselves in private, but uh, we'll have plenty of time out there to, to continue our conversation. There's one important thing that I want to do on our consent agenda, which I understand I want to pull, but I do have two public comments that because we kind of went back a little bit back and forth on, on this agenda, uh, I've got a Rogelio Ro Vargas for a public comment. Is he still here? It's public comment, sir. It's general public time. Or did you want to talk about one of the specific items on the agenda? No, just uh, okay. Do you mind me just reading something to you really quick? Yes. Um, you're, you're welcome. Is this one working okay? You're welcome to go up there and stand. I just need to do this real quick. Public comments and public appearances are not to exceed three minutes. This is the time for the public to address the city council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter of the jurisdiction of the city council. The mayor will recognize you, and when you come to the microphone, please state your name and place of residence for the record. While members of the public are encouraged to participate, it's unlawful to disturb or delay the council meeting with personal or slanderous remarks. If the item you wish to comment on is a consent item, please comment now. The city council is prohibited by state law from taking action or discussing items not included on the printed agenda. If the item you wish to comment on is in the public portion, which is that we're at now, um, of the agenda, we'll take your comment when we're here, and if it's on the agenda item, I'll take it then. But if we don't have any more here, probably won't be able to have time to take any more. So if you want it now, um, please give those to me now. Uh, and please, very important, direct your questions and comments to the City Council. Um, please, Mr. Rogelio Vargas, uh, go on. Good, good, good evening. Uh, my name is Rogelio Vargas. Uh, I'm here representing uh, Rogar Manufacturing Company in, in El Centro. Um, I, uh, we are a manufacturing company that is growing quite a bit. We have an issue at our facility right now with uh, with parking, um, uh, and uh, 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 Councilman Hutch yeah. was was at uh, was at our uh, a meeting CTC. with the CTC, and um, he asked me he asked us to come in come in. Uh, our problem our issue is we have a, 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 a small facility with a lot of employees and our parking spot. We had we asked the transit to get a bus stop towards us, but that that's probably not going to be possible. 
So um, we are going to probably have to get uh, become members of the Calvans, and um, we have a lot of employees from Mexicali. So our issue is that we would like to see if uh, if the Calexico has any parking spaces so we could park the vans overnight. Um, and I I know that won't be addressed at this point, but that's that's what our concern or, or our what we are asking for. Probably, we usually can't come into too much of a com conversation with you when you come to public comments, but that sounds like maybe be a great time to talk to our economic development director, which is sitting right there, Mr. Figueroa, and I believe that he'll be able to help you to address the, the needs that you have at this point. Um, he is one of our newest team uh, members, so you're welcome to do that, and I believe you'll find some solutions, at least some guidance, definitely. And know that you have the support of the council as well. You're talking about Rogar being located here in Calexico, of course, right? No, we're located in, in El Centro, but we need transportation for our employees. So we would, we would get Cal vans, vans and, and park them somewhere in Calexico if, if, okay. if possible. Because the, those the have pool sharing uh, system yes. that exists, okay, through ICTCs, okay. Um, yeah, and so the relationship with ICT is great. So know that there is uh, a definite interest in what it is that happens in Calexico because transportation is so big. Especially yes. like right now during the holidays with all your agricultural companies and stuff like that, of course. So definitely he's, he's on it and that is his game. So let's give him that chance to help you out. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Alrighty, next is, um, let's say, public comment, uh, Mr. James Weaver. Is he still here? Next meeting? Okay, that make that easy. Alrighty, so I think that's it on public comments then. Um, we're going to then uh, accept, uh, uh, approve the uh, consent agenda. Do I, I believe we're gonna pull number eight. To I'll make a motion to approve pulling number eight. Okay. A second. First by Mr. Real, second by Mr. Hodge. All in favor Aye. of the approval of the consent agenda? Yeah, Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay, item number eight. We are going to be- Madam Mayor, yes, Madam Mayor. Before the vote, then I oh I do. Oh, okay, so let's go ahead and take some public comments then with regard to this part of our agenda. Let's start with Yolanda Cunningham. She had some comments on item number six. Six. Um, voy a leer porque no, o sea, concreticé todo, entonces quiero hacerlo más rápido. Eh, buenas noches. Uh -huh. eh, estamos aquí esta noche presentes un grupo de residentes del área de Victoria, representando a decenas de familias de esa comunidad, para solicitar ante este concilio la votación favorable para la aprobación del presupuesto que se aplicaría para el mejoramiento del Parque Córdoba, ubicado en el área en mención y de esta forma empezar por fin a cumplir con las promesas hechas hace muchísimos años a sus residentes de ofrecer un parque con canchas para la práctica de deportes, áreas verdes y de recreación, entre otras cosas, el cual abarcaría todo el terreno ubicado entre las avenidas Zapata, Meadows y Clinton. La triste realidad que ha imperado durante todos estos años es que solo contamos con un gran terreno baldío completamente desaprovechado y abandonado, ya que solo sirve de basurero y de nido de vagos, pues se encuentra en penumbra todas las noches. Un área de juegos para niños patética, pues solo tiene dos pequeñas estaciones de juegos. Instalada sobre arena, la cual solo ha causado o empeorado problemas de alergias, además de generar constantes caídas por la falta de un buen mantenimiento al parque. Y antihigiénica también, pues los, ga los gatos y los perros van y defecan en ella. No hay sombras tampoco, lo cual hace imposible usar estas áreas en días calurosos y soleados, especialmente en los veranos. No hay luz en el área de juego de los niños, lo cual causa desconfianza e inseguridad, aunado a la nula vigilancia policiaca, especialmente cuando se apagan las luces de las áreas verdes, el estacionamiento se presta para la práctica de actividades sexuales y de drogas que se hacen en el parque. Finalmente, eh, siendo este parque tan concurrido no solo por sus residentes, sino por muchas familias de Caléxico, ya que lo consideran un poco más seguro que otros parques, eh, y sabiendo que sí existe aparentemente los recursos económicos acumulados durante muchos años por el pago de nuestros impuestos, los cuales no son nada baratos, 
Hoy queremos dar un voto de confianza ante esta administración para demostrar que todavía existen servidores públicos honrados y con palabra, eh, que trabajan y utilizan los recursos públicos de una manera transparente y honesta, para el bien común de sus ciudadanos, a pesar de la frustración y profundo enojo que existe eh, en contra de la misma. Pues los residentes de esta ciudad no vemos con claridad en dónde se aplican dichos recursos, ya que carecemos de servicios públicos efectivos y necesarios. Eso es todo. Muchas gracias. Muchas Disculpen, gracias. ¿cuándo se va a escuchar la votación sobre el proyecto del parque? ¿La votación de lo que tenemos en la agenda el día de hoy? Sí, señora. Uh -huh. eh, didn't pull that one, no, we? Hoy, hoy vamos a votar. En cuanto okay. termine la, 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 sí. la sección en Perfecto. donde estamos ¿Podemos ahorita. Podemos esperar para escucharla entonces. Nada más para que comprenda la sección en donde está este voto. Sí. Es uh, como seis diferentes um, puntos. Sí. Y esta sección son, um, son asuntos de rutina que se consideran. Sí. Entonces no hay muchas conversaciones muchas veces. Y cuando okay. se hace en grupo, se está haciendo un voto a favor o en contra en grupo. Okay. So, cuando nosotros tenemos algo que hablar o, o más duda, lo sacamos lo platicamos y lo lo votamos independientemente. Pero cuando nosotros como ciudadanos podemos entender. En este momento porque esta decisión ya está en este grupo. Perfecto. Uh -huh. Perfecto. Está bien. Gracias. I had to say that in Spanish, guys. Anybody need any clarification on that? This is a, a section where we're going to uh, approve about one, two, three, four, five, six items um, as a group. So um, I did have uh, the approval of the uh, the <coughs> consent agenda first. Um, I got my um, first public comment. I believe I have one more which is item seven, and that's Ben. Ben Horton? I actually have another one for item seven. Where is he? Is he still there? Madam Mayor, distinguished members of the City Council, public at large. Number seven is a <clears throat> item for the approval for the trailer, or I should say the mobile home, whatever you want to call it, for the American Legion. I don't know if anybody really knows anything about the American Legion, but it's military personnel that have served, veterans, and all, and we're looking for a home. And we're looking to work with the city in order to revamp the, uh, the trailer in the park to make it useful, usable for a home for the American Legion, post number 90. And I thank the city council for working with us and to move this forward and to everybody that has help on this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Mr. Vindiola? The park. Mr. Vindiola? Would you like to make some comments on item seven? We pulled, we pulled it and... Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. And council people. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I am one representing some of my fellow comrades, which is the incoming new commander, David Sanchez, the outgoing commander, Frank Pacheco, the fellow member comrade, Mike Mendoza, and also Mr. Rio Seco is part of our new organization. I've been a member of the American Legion for the past 25 years. We were privileged enough to uh, share the Elks building where we would have our monthly meetings. Well, unfortunately, that building is no longer available to us. We then we had the kindness from Mr. Hargrave from the former family restaurant, and he was kind enough to let us use his banquet room for our gatherings. Unfortunately, Mr. Hargrave closed his business down. Then we were working with the ladies from the Women's Improvement Club. Well, they have also their functions, so sometimes it's kind of hard for us to have our meetings there. Mr. Sanchez, Comrade Sanchez, found out about the trailer that you have over there on the North Sotros Park. I believe at one time you were utilizing it as a uh, annex for the police department. It's a nice park out there, nice recreational area for the children and families. I've been there a couple of times many years ago. Well, we find ourselves right now again in limbo 
as to where do we have our meetings. Some of you people that have never been in the military don't realize how much the comradeship means to us veterans, those that served in combat and those that did not serve, but we're still part of that big military family. Some of us, unfortunately, never came back. The only way you can understand what the veterans go through is you have to be a veteran yourself. So all we're doing is just asking the city if they can possibly see their way clear to lease us that trailer out there. With an understanding, of course, Comrade Sanchez will be the ramrodder and to familiarize the last final words as to the ins and outs of the actual trailer. I believe I was under the impression that we would have the upkeep. That would be our responsibility. But we'd have to see it in black and white. We'd have to sit down with you, the landlords per se. But I hope you can see your way clear. Uh, some of us veterans don't have much time left. I'm coming up on 83, so I don't know how much time I got left. And uh, some of us are not in the best of physical shape. My comrade Mendoza, Vietnam veteran. My comrade Pacheco, Korean veteran. He froze his you-know-what up over there. Again, we hope we can work with you and you can work with us and see your work clear to where we could utilize that trailer park out there. Thank you very much. Last but not least, the happiest holidays to each and one of you and all your family. God bless you. Same to you. Thank you, Joe. All righty, I can see the festivities being set up out there already, and I'm hungry. All righty, so we don't uh, have much to do as far as the majority. We only pulled one item, so if we can... Another gentleman. Hi, I'm Miguel Mendoza. Very few people know me here because my parents were federal employees. So I came here when I was about 15 years old. And for the first time since I had started school, I actually get to go to Calexico High School for the full three and a half years. But up to this time, I have been in seven different schools from first grade to eighth grade. So you know how close and how good I felt about going to Calexico High School. All my friends are from here. My parents got transferred my senior year. So, but I didn't forget, I went into service and I came back and married a local girl. <laughs> well, I stayed in the service for 20 years, so I took this local girl and I, we traveled the world over. But I came back here, and this is the American Legion. I've been a member of it off and on for quite a few years. And we're a very quiet organization, believe it or not, since 1910, to 1915 that I've been the finance officer of this organization, we have an income of approximately $700 a month. 40 to 60% of our income per month we donate to the community. You don't hear about us, but there is a lot of youth groups and kids that want to go to college that they come to us uh, we stick our hands in our pockets and we donate. Now, however, we have a problem. Up to one time, we used to have 150 members of Calexico who are members of our post. They were, most of them were World War II veterans. Unfortunately, just about all of them have passed away. Now, the Korean vets, I am one of them, are going the same way. Just very few of us are still healthy enough to still take part on better organizations and try to help the community. Uh, 
we need right now, we lost the, Korea, the World War II veterans. We're losing the Korean War vets to, to age. Now, Vietnam veterans, I am one Vietnam veteran because I took three tours in Vietnam. And most of us Vietnam veterans, when we got out of the service, uh, the only thing we wanted to do was forget the time that we were in the service because our government was not exactly backed us up. Now, right now, we're trying to reach to the Desert Storm and the Pakistan or Afghanistan veterans to help them. And also, mainly, we're also trying to get act, reach to the female veterans. Our post, our national membership Commandant is a female. It's the only veteran organization that have a female commandant. But we need a, a location so we can rebuild our post, that we can, people have come and have access to us. So we have asked them to see if they can help us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, moving on, we're going to then uh, address uh, item number eight. Um, who pulled it? Who asked to be pulled? Um, I, did, would you like to make any comments on item number eight, um, Mr. Dale, before we move on on that one? Yes, Madam Mayor. We're pulling yes. it out for something special. I know that we want to say something special. So. We, we have someone special in the audience today. To thank, somebody to thank. special to thank? Yes, uh, so too. was instrumental in getting this grant for the city. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, do the item real quick. Item number eight is under our consent agenda is the acceptance of an Imperial Irrigation District grant funding in the amount of $150,000 under the, fi the final 2017 Local Entity Mitigation Funding Grant Program for <coughs> sport lighting at Joel Risen Field, very badly needed, and authorize the city manager to sign a contract with IID. Madam is that Mayor. true? Yes. Madam Mayor, excuse me for interrupting, but our city clerk says we need to vote on the other items before we address eight. Didn't you want to pull that one first? We. Okay. Yeah. Is that true? Making everybody happy here. All right. Let's go ahead. Um, thank you, Gabby. You always keep me in line. <laughs> let's go ahead then and take a vote. Um, do I have any? Vote to approve all items except eight at this time. Thank you, Mr. Second. Pacheco. So, uh, first by Mr. Pacheco, second by Mr. Escobar. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hi, I, I just want to make a motion on item six. I believe that's the park. Is that the park grant? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I hope that that you as community things is kind of uh, sometimes uh, very expensive. So mm -hmm. hopefully in the future we can kind of look at other yeah. um, other areas. I, I know sometimes it's the easiest way to go, but uh, for the most part, what I have seen is uh, we got to remember that the valley. Um, a lot of things in the valley are cheaper, and so sometimes we can do local things versus just taking these uh, these U.S. community contracts because sometimes they're 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 pretty expensive. So yeah, you're absolutely correct. And we have a time frame that we have to okay. get this built by. So yeah. understood. Thank you. I have to get a little yeah, clarification on that one later because it's grant. It's all righty. So that being said, um, who would like to take who would like to take the uh, the lead on item number eight, please? No se escucha su voz um, cuando está así. Gracias. Lo que hay que es recordar lo que hicimos hoy para los muchachos. No sé si estabas presente. Tienes un buen equipo ahorita aquí en tus líderes. Y eso es lo que le queríamos es mostrar a estos muchachos, porque hay muchas decisiones muy positivas y un equipo nuevo que nos está apoyando a una nueva dirección. Como debe de ser. Gracias. No, no, no es a propósito. 
Ándale. Gracias a usted. Muchas gracias por esos comentarios muy positivos. Nos anima mucho eso. Sorry I had to say all that in Spanish, but very positive words from one of our residents can see that um, we have a team, a dream team, as they say, to fear, I guess, um, and watch, and, and watch us as a new team. So thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> now one more time. I'm trying to get to you, um, Eric. Trying Thanks to get so to you. Who would like to make the presentation of any words, anything to, about what we did here with Eric? Eric, give us a check. Do you have it on you right now? <laughs> You can handle those big, big, big ones. Let's cut to the chase. Give us the check. No. Yeah. Go, go ahead and oh, well, you already blew the secret. It's oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you with Cats the out of the bag. Um, no, uh, my name's Ira Risen. I'm the grandson of uh, Joel Risen. And I just wanted to thank oh. Eric Ortega and uh, awesome. okay. Norma Galindo for uh, the grant. And we'd also like to thank you guys. I'm representing the whole family. Could make it. Awesome. No, you're so say tall. Thank you. Yeah. Part of the family. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jeans. Thank you so much. Lighting is so important to our parks, especially with the weather that allows our kids to play when, the, when it's a better time in, in the Madam summer. Mayor. <laughs> Madam Mayor. Oh, so who is that, going to okay. do? I think I did enough tonight already. Come on, guys. Okay. I'm the mayor. I don't have to do everything. Uh, earlier this year, the city applied uh, for some funding for. Ryzen Field, and uh, uh, Director uh, Ortega, that, who's here in the audience, was instrumental in, in this grant and also other grants for the city that, that's been here. And so we're really thankful. We want to express our thanks to the IID and also to Director Ortega especially. Thank you. Te teams like ours don't get to finish our jobs as, as easily, and, and we just don't work that uh, well-oiled machine without working with companies and, and organizations that also pull together our, our networking and our, and our jobs to, to make things happen for communities. So, appreciate that. Does anybody else want to say anything to, did you want to say anything to um, Eric? For the check? <laughs> no, um, all kidding aside, that, 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 um, that field I know um, <clears throat> very instrumental, uh, uh, Morris Risen. Uh, that really, really pushed for this for, for years. Um, also, um, Chuy Iñiguez, which yes. put his, I mean, elbow heart grease and, and heart and soul um, with, with a few other people in uh, Desert Girl Softball. Um, I myself helped uh, with one of the, um, the smaller field uh, with the fencing there. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely going to, right now with, Everything happening on Cesar Chavez and uh, those fields eventually not being able to be used by our youth, these fields are going to be, I mean, instrumental to us. So, um, you know, just thanks for helping us out and, uh, um, you know, thanks everybody for being involved, the Ryzen family, and, uh, you know, uh, that hopefully that place will be here for, for a long time serving our community. So, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Eric. Buen amigo. Alrighty, so um, we're going to have to vote on it now. Vote on it. Mm -hmm. Make a motion that you approve eight. Second. Second. Third. Oh, God, I didn't catch that second. <laughs> First by Mr. Escobar and the second, it's a free for Third all. Mr. Me. Hodge. Third by me. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much to the IID and thank you very much to Mr. Ortega for an excellent job well done. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. <laughs> thank you very much. Alrighty, moving on. Oh. Post 90, you did get the trader. Okay. American Legion, post 90. Mm -hmm. Trader's yours. Right. Here. That's a great relationship there, too, working with our partners out there. Um, could, I, could I just make a comment on, the, on that? Uh, I think that's item eight, correct? American Legion? Six. Mm, six. Six. Um, just for legal, I know that there American was. Legion no, is, um, did seven. we? Seven. Did, oh, seven. Did we check on? I know that um, Carmen Estrada and uh, uh, they had that trader. Could we just make sure that we check on that? Make sure that you know like there's. I know it's been abandoned. But just make yeah, sure I think that, that legally. That was a previous um, lease that had expired. Okay. Okay. Um, they were like a year. Lease. How many? How many years did we did we get? This them one's right a. Now? I want to say a two year lease if I recall correctly, and two it years? has a, Okay. And also has a thir thirty day termination okay. provision. So okay, for some reason it's not working now. We can terminate okay. that within two, two years. Perfect. Thank you. Alrighty. Um, thirty days notice. Okay, we're gonna move on now to our um, regular section of our agenda discussion and potential action items. <coughs> Excuse me. Next item is item number 11. Authorize the city manager to sign a two-year agreement between the city of Calexico and 
Aramic Uniform Service for Work Uniforms, Linens, and Supplies for the City of Calexico Department of Facilities. Do we need any input? Uh, Madam wow. Mayor, the Public Works went out for requests for proposals to, uh, for uniforms for our, our guys in the field. And uh, we received two proposals and City Public Works staff reviewed the proposals and determined uh, that Aramic, Aramic Uniform Service was the most responsive and the most value to the city. I have some questions. Um, as far as price-wise, were they the lowest price? The prices were very close and City uh, Public Works staff negotiated with the um, proposed winner uh, and uh, they were, the price was reduced. And the price is very similar, but they're ten dollars a little bit, ten dollars more per week. Is that um, um, our legal? As far as does it have to go up for bid again because it was reduced the price? And no, the, we and we reviewed the sign specifically, and the bid documents allowed us to make modifications and, and give us that flexibility on this item. It's not one where we, by law we needed to give it to the lowest responsible bidder. It's one we look at other items. That which are the best which company did we have now before them? We have Alsco right and now. And is that the is other it? company that yes. Alsco? Yes. Yeah. We used to have them. Um, okay. I know that yeah. we, we touched this subject once, and, and it seemed to me that at the time, uh, Alsco, I think, was the company that we had, correct? Yes. Um, and I know they had somebody, they sent someone to speak regarding that it was cheaper to keep them because this new company would have to do everything new again. And so there's a startup cost. No, is including, that, including the, all the costs. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, is that a local company, the one that, that's getting the bid? Because I know Al Alaska is from here. Yeah. Do you yeah. know? They're, I think they're within the county. They are? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then Alaska, I, I th um, look at my notes right here. They also only submitted three of the nine responsive documents to the RFP, whereas um, the Aramark received um, eight of 11. So they were, that's one of the reasons to the city was able to negotiate um, with Aramark because they were they had submitted eight, I think they were eight of nine responsive so the one documents. The one you guys want is our, our mark. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They, they were they had a more they responded um, a lot more completely than did uh, Moscow. Uh -huh. And then the the way the the project was bid, we could we could negotiate um, that lower price. Um, and because it's not a it, and by state law, we're not bound by the lowest responsible bidder. That's what, that's a okay. we could go with this. That's good. Um, with our mark for the project. So there's there's some bids where we are bound, bound and some that we're not. So, yeah, some just be take it if they're responsive, um, which means they they you know they meet all the requirements, and if they're the lowest bidder, we have to go by, um, with them by law. There there are, and that's not so one because of these they weren't because they re didn't respond with everything. That's we, the reason why you can pick the higher bidder. You don't. You can reject it because it's not perfect. Yeah, because we were looking at they had only responded three of the eleven items, whereas Aramark has responded eight to eleven. So uh, we we evaluated whether or not we had to rebid the entire um, project. Yeah, this again. is the second time we bid it. Yeah, we, were, we looked whether we had to do it um, based on non-responsiveness. But in the in the in when we did the RFP, we we had that flexibility. And one negotiate. of the companies that came that wanted to be on there never even responded afterwards. Or I know there was a, a local company that was that was uh, interested that. That then didn't follow through. Is that what happened? Yeah, we only received the two. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve item number 11. Thank you, Mr. Hodge. Do I have a second? So moved. First by Mr. Hodge, second by Mr. Pacheco. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item number 12 Authorize the Public Works Director, City Engineer, to file notice of completion for street improvement project asphalt rubber comp composite layer overlay on designated streets in La Jolla Palms subdivision project number 2017-400. Yeah, we, we've deemed the project to be complete and we, this is a formality that the council needs to approve. Any questions? So moved. Oh, they have a slip. Is this a slip? I never got it, I'm sorry. Slip for 12, excuse me, ma'am. Good afternoon, my name is uh, Blanca Castellanos and uh, first of all, I would like to thank everybody for making the improvements in La Jolla Palms Division. Uh, however, there are still missing two lights, one on La Jolla Boulevard and one on Spud Moreno. I called, I believe it was on October or September, 
to do a follow-up, and, and I, I never received a call back. Yeah, it's an electrical issue. We're, we, we're working on it. Spud Moreno and who the street was? Spud Moreno and La Jolla Boulevard. Oh, they're still out? That was my well, corner. Yes. That's where my house was. I never yes. got it there either. <laughs> so I just want to make sure because it's on the list. Never been moved. Yeah, that's a separate item that we're working on. Oh, yeah. okay. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Are we still actively with that subcommittee that's meeting regularly with no. the residents, or are we pretty much finished up with the different issues that were the purpose of the subcommittee? I, I, I'm sorry. I have a question. He said it was in a separate item, but it's included on the street improvements. What was the question again? He said it was on a separate item, right? Mm -hmm. But it was included on the street repairs for the street lights. In the project. In the project. Yeah. You know that you have Mr. Um, Dale available too. But appreciate all those questions and we're glad that we're moving forward. Yeah, so to answer your question, Madam Mayor, uh, we, we, we met uh, several times with the subcommittee and the group of residents and I think a lot of the, a lot of the issues they raised were met. So, so we have still some work. decided to, yeah, to finalize the, the committee meetings. Uh. Down a little bit. And, okay. and what we're asking here is for the overlay project is not with the lights. This is a different, this project is for just the overlay. Finishing up the actual street. Um, I did get confused. Where did we end up at, guys? Did we take a motion? I heard somebody say make motion. Make a motion to accept. Uh, Are you, Mr. Pacheco, you yes. were the first and then I'll approve. Me. I mean, I'll second. You're a second? Excuse okay. Me. All in favor to authorize uh, number 12. Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Item number 13, um, resolution of the City Council of the City of Calexico pursuant to Public Contracts Code, PCC Section 20168, finding that the emergency exists due to the need for a new variable frequency drive at the wastewater treatment plant and authorized contracting the without the need for binding pursuant to PCC Section <coughs> 22050. In 2014, look, I'll go backwards. There's five pumps at the water plant. Each one of them has a separate computer that runs it. And in 2014, the city declared an emergency and replaced two of those. And there were remaining three. And one of those three has now gone bad, so we're down one pump. So we consider this an emergency. We'd like to move forward. We've got a, what we deem to be a very good price to do it. It's a computer, computer component, and it needs to be replaced. Um, may I just say, your, your microphone's not sounding right. Hmm. Are you picking it up okay? It's a little muffled. Okay, yeah. maybe just separate your mouth. Council, any comments? Don't touch it. Questions? I'll make motion. a motion. Second. Okay, a motion by Mr. Pacheco, second by Mr. Hodge. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. We're moving along so fast, we're ready to... Have some nice times out there. Okay, item number 14 is uh, add an accountant job classification for the finance department in the adopted fiscal year 2017-18 budget and approve the hiring of a permanent full-time accountant. Who wants to take that one? So, Madam Chair, let me explain what we're doing. Um, we, we, what we're doing is, is we're actually requesting the council to consider adding this uh, position to the budget as it wasn't added in the budget before. And what we're doing is we're actually eliminating a administrative position that uh, left to another department and we're actually taking the opportunity to resize the department, right size it. And we uh, have decided based on needs that it would be better fit to hire an accountant as opposed to refill or back to that position. Uh, this is basically a, a request to amend the budget and amend the position allocation table so that we can act, go ahead and recruit. We probably won't end up recruiting this person for a good two months. Uh, you know, we still have to go through the recruitment process and uh, actually select a person yet. Okay. In, in, my, in our conversations, I think the only comment was that being that we have already uh, advertised for the position of the finance manager for a permanent um, candidate uh, that we also in look for timely 
uh, positioning and, and seeking out the candidate once we have the actual top True. position in place. <coughs> make more sense. Okay. <coughs> Is do I have any motions on that? Uh, I have a comment. Um, in light of what uh, our mayor has said, I, I think it's important that we do also hire a permanent finance director to fill this position, but I would want to, and I, I want your input, given our input to you, your input as to why we should potentially take this to, to a vote currently without a finance director. No, no, so, so we're not asking you to, to um, uh, approve a position. We're, we're, we're asking you to uh, to allow, allow us to budget. amend the, the position allocation table so that we can recruit for an accountant. The, the, the finance director vacancy is already under recruitment. So it's, it's very, very uh, uh, possible that we would have a, a finance director to choose who that accountant is going to be. We all agree that might be the best way to go. Yeah. Are you okay with that? <clears throat> I have a comment. Um, with uh, obviously budget issues, um, I I personally don't don't support another position just because I know that once the finance director is picked, I know that our acting finance director would go back to that accounting position. My understanding, and maybe at that time could be the new finance director can assess if that need is is needed, and if he need, he feels that it's needed, then he can pick it. Same thing like we said right now, but at the same time. Um, with us voting right now, it, it makes it gives us the, deci the decision that one is needed when maybe he might feel it's not. So I don't uh, I don't support adding another um, hundred hundred thirty thousand dollar person to our budget right now. So um, thank you. Uh, can I comment on his comment, yeah. Mayor? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, it was not one thirty. I mean, it's scheduled for I think fifty six. But I I, I oh, agree okay. with what you're saying. And I think it's something uh, that maybe we could table for 30 days while we uh, not only recruit, but potentially the, hire the, the acting yeah. uh, city manager, hire the uh, future finance director, and then between the acting city manager and the future recently hired finance director can decide to fill that position. So my, I make a motion that we table this. Let me, let me just... To, if we table, that means that it doesn't come to the next agenda, uh, to the next agenda. Continuance. So what you want to do is continue. So I make a motion that we continue, continue. this to, let's say, uh, would you be in agreement that we would continue this to the second meeting in January? Is that fair? Month. Mm -hmm. That gives us well, basically Continue until till we hire a finance director. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to hire somebody pretty be. quickly. Yeah. So Mr. Sure. Villa, this slot has been vacant. We, we don't have a, a person mm -hmm. in this position. It's so, a vacant slot. Yeah, in the past we, we had two accountants and through the budgetary issues that we had, we had to eliminate some of those. We do have a vacancy as an administrator position and we're, we're actually switching the allocation. We're eliminating the administrator position and we want to propose that, it, that that new position be an accountant position. I think the salary range I can see there is up to the next one, yeah, fifty-six thousand the maximum, mm -hmm. which which will offset the savings from the elimination of the administrative position. Um, you, know, you know, there's no question in my mind that we need uh, uh, accounting professionals in the department uh, to be able to keep up with with the with just paying the bills and balancing the books. So at this point, yeah, a CPA for fifty-six thousand. Good luck. No, no, no. This is an this is an accounting accounting a technical accounting position. Oh, okay. and we so call it accounting. Doesn't have to be an accountant. It's an accountant. It's, it, the title well, is an accountant. You have to have an accounting a, degree. A technical accounting position. Accounting degree. With and it's actually pretty important because we've we've probably required an accountant. and We've had the the alternative um, degrees, which might be an economist and stuff like that, and that's it's very different. Mm -hmm. So. Um. I, that's why I think you're looking at, at, a, at a council that's telling you that maybe it's not timely right now because you want your team leaders to make those be inclusive in the decision. Is that what you're kind of saying? That is, that's exactly what I'm saying. It, 30 it's, days then? We need to, w that finance director needs to come in um, and whatever time he says it's going to take to assess the finances, whether it's a month or six months, he will let us know, hey, I need help. I need help or I don't. Um, I, I, that's just my thing. Also, 
um, that that finance director, um, again, he's going to be held liable. Can they make a motion? He should he should know who he's going to pick. I mean, that's just that's what uh, I feel. Well, I made the motion to make the motion to yeah to, to continue continuance for second uh, for a second meeting in January. Okay. Legal? Is that okay? That's appropriate. That would be January seventeenth. Uh, first uh, amended motion then for uh, for a temporary um, stay on on this decision. Seconded by Mr. Real. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. Okay. Not all in favor. Um, okay. One against. Okay. Better safe than sorry, right? Alrighty, number 15, we don't have the 16, right? So this is our last one. This, um, I guess somebody was gonna address this one. Oh, I have lots of them, not that one. There was a request by two of you, which we normally don't do, but um, we're in such a festive mood today. We'll be nice to you today, how's that? <laughs> Jim and Jim and Jim? This item 15. The Jim gentleman, who wants to speak for, because it's usually three minutes, so we're trying to time. The only one that got away with a longer thing there was the gentleman that about the <laughs> but uh, we learned. So you'll do six, okay? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. You are welcome. Um, hold, hold on, uh, Mayor, we're, we're on item 15, correct? Yes. yes. Um, could I could I just speak real quick on it? Uh, it's actually public time right now. Oh, it's public time. Yeah. All the, you guys all have right. your chance? Okay. Great. You thank you, Madam Mayor. And Honorable Council, um, happy holidays. Jim Sprouse. And um, I'm with Cannabis Tax and Accounting Services. Uh, we're a firm that specializes in the cannabis industry. I've actually spoken here before. And tonight, I'm going to give my insight to uh, item 15, which is delivery um, here in Calexico. Um, I also served on the San Diego Cannabis Delivery Association, uh, which back in September, we lobbied and worked with the council, the city council of San Diego, because they were in the same position you are they had to decide if delivery made sense in the city of San Diego, right? So uh, we worked with the council members and I'm happy to say that through the process, they came to a point where they reversed their decision, reversing meaning it wasn't on the agenda to where they actually put it to a planning commission and they're reviewing it and they're gonna vote very soon, right? So I think they went through that process because of education and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna give you some education tonight, actually have some packets for you. Um, I didn't realize Mr. Dale is going to be here, so you don't actually skip Mr. Um, Via, maybe, because you're on your way out, so <laughs> you don't need it. Um, but uh, there's some packets, it's, it, and please. No respect. <laughs> no respect. <laughs> I love, I love. <laughs> I, I just ask council that you please don't just throw this in that circular you know, recycling bin known as trash, right? Please do take the time. This is from the Bureau of Cannabis Control. This is the state. This is state law. You're going to find some interesting data in here about uh, gateway theories and whether cannabis is good or bad, you know, medicinal or not, right? So please take the time to look at that. Also, if anyone's sitting in here uh, wants, just ask me and I'll give you my card. I'll email all this information to you. Not a problem at all. This is about education. This is about understanding. Absolutely. Um, so let's just, uh, let's go into this a little bit. Um, there's currently 20 deliveries. Oh, by the way, too, anyone sitting here, if you don't want to listen to me, go to weedmaps.com. Weed, as in cannabis, weedmaps.com. In the upper left-hand corner, if you look at that, you see the little lines, click on it, hit delivery, and you're going to get a map of exactly where you're sitting right now. And you're going to see all the deliveries that are operating loosely under uh, Prop 215. It's, it's legal in California. It's been so since 1996. They're operating under Prop, Prop 215. However, here's the problem, Council. That ends at the end of this year. So as of 1-1, right, we're now in the mock RSA from, from the state. And they have, uh, through adult use and, uh, and medicinal, through MRSA, they have uh, these emergency regulations that just came out in November. And they gave a category for delivery. The state saw it was so important, they gave a category for a virtual dispensary, if you will. So it's legal at the state, right? But as of the first of the year, there, well, I'm sure everybody's tracking, if you're interested in the subject, what happened to the county? Emergency? Is that me? Chief, is that, are we okay? All right. We're, good. we're, we're eating into his six minutes. <laughs> we're, on, we're on pause, aren't we, Madam Mayor? No, you're okay. <laughs> that was only half a second, so. All right, so let me talk faster then. So, um, so the, so the challenge is, the challenge is tweeted. that there are patients here 
in Imperial County that need access to medicine. That is the challenge that we're facing. Without legal access, they are purchasing from the illicit market, from the black market. That's the position they're in. The county, although passed on November 21st, y'all saw that news, right? That could take upwards of a year to, to go through that whole process. So for a long time, the patients that are out here, and let me give you some numbers on this, studies from the Marijuana Policy Project found that 2% of, of California residents have a medicinal card, which allows you to purchase medicinal cannabis, right, since 1996. Well, the, 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 there's also, they, they, they factor that 3% of the population of California use cannabis medicinally. Right? So do the math on the county here. There's 175 roughly residents, 175,000. Let's, let's take, um, let's take 2% of that. That means there's 3,500 residents here in this community that don't have access to medicine at the beginning of the year. Right? It puts them in a bad position to have to be forced into an illicit market. Sorry to, sorry to stop you. Can I, can I just ask you a quick question? Um, how many, um, uh, if I caught, if I caught you correctly, you said that starting in January, the the people that are that are uh, delivering now can no longer deliver. Uh, they well, they'll be they'll be illegal. Yes, they'll correct. be. How because many how many delivery places are in the valley right now? Uh, you need to go to WeMaps.com when I ask you to. That <laughs> roughly fifteen to twenty. Twenty, and then Calexico also two. We're two. Time yeah, you can go. I won't go to weedmaps.com. Upper left corner. We want to not interrupt you too too much no, no, no. because right. we want you to continue. Okay, so let me go back in some of this. So uh, you have a question to, to to answer for yourselves, right? Should the city move forward with this or not? That's what this discussion is. So a typical situation when you when you're in something, you look at it risk versus reward, right? That's what you're assessing right now: risk versus reward. Well, let's go to reward. The county moved forward in their initiative. They looked at an eight percent reward numbers. Right, Mr. Escobar? Numbers, 8%. We'll do the math on this. What percentage of Californians use cannabis and will purchase from these dispensaries? Uh, there is, according to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration, 15% of Californians purchase cannabis regularly. But let's just say the wonderful citizens of Imperial County, let's take that down to 10%, right? So let's just say 10% purchase. And total taxation at 8% excise tax, that's $850,000. That'll be funneled through taxation right, that possibly the city, if enacted it in the ordinance or amended the ordinance, could participate in as well, right? That's 850,000. I heard a lot of numbers being thrown around tonight, ball fields and, and everything else. Um, it's a lot of money. So uh, that was on some averages. I won't go into that. So then that's the reward, right? That's why, you, that's why these are enacted. Well, what's your risk? Seriously, what is your risk? They're already buying it. You're not going to stop people from purchasing medicine or using it recreationally. It's legal in the state. What is your risk? You're not going to stop this movement. It's not going backwards, right? You cannot do that. I mean, sure, you can arrest the illicit operators, and they probably will be, right? But they want to be in a regulated system. You probably will have them lined up for this. So I really, I'm sorry for saying that, but to be so bluntly, but I'm, I, I can't find the risk in this. And I thought this afternoon, I took some notes, and I gave you some some stats, but I couldn't really find your risk in that because the way you can capitalize on this is by taxing it. And you were already very bold earlier this year to, 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 to put some ordinances uh, moving forward. And I know the patients appreciate that. I appreciate your time and, and thank you very much. Um, this item is a uh, discussion only. So um, we're going to allow for a couple of people to have uh, their comments only, and then after that, we'll bring it back to the council. Mr. Ben, you want to start? Madam Mayor, distinguished members of the city council. I'm not for or against it, but I do have some questions in reference to what we talked about initially way back when, that we wouldn't have any dispensary. Now, one of the things I'm looking at is we're talking about a percentage. How are you gonna control the sale of this? Are you gonna have somebody weighing it or doing something in reference to the sale of it? Or it's just, they say they have people, two people floating around in Calexico right now doing the sales. Who are they? 
That's what he said, two persons. Who are they? Do if we you know who they are? Yeah. Who are they? You can go on the website and find them. You can okay. call them. We, is the city getting... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go on the website. Is the city getting any revenue from it? No, and I think code enforcement knows that they're around, but no, I mean, it's not... I, they can't come to the city and get a, a, a business license for that, I think, yet, right? No. Well, they, yeah, correct. They're, they're operating, prohib they're prohibited within the city, so that way, yeah. There's they're no. operating, are they not? They should have a business license, but they don't. They don't. And how many people in the city do business and don't have business license? We and, don't know, but we know they do people. exist. Yeah. So what I'm saying here is oh, Las Palmas. there's some questions about the ability to have this business operating in the city of Calexico right now. Now, the people of the city of Calexico, you want to be in business, you're supposed to have a business license and operate with sales tax and everything that goes with it. Now, we're talking about having a business that's already operating. Is the city gaining anything with those two individuals? Do we have sales tax? Do we have a way to measure it? I'm just saying, we want to do things. Let's do it properly with a business license and move forward or do we adjust to it and do things a different way than we normally do? This is my question. But like I said, I'm not for it or against it, but I'm saying let's get all the information, how we're going to make the money on it, and if we're going to make the money. But as it stands right now, it's just whatever. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Last speaker, Marcy Morales. Number 15, my bad. Yeah. After, after your comments, that's going to be the end of our actual meeting, and then we're going to do a little something, something with something else. No pressure. You just have three minutes. Hi, good evening. My name is Marcy Morales, and I am the vice president and co founder of Headstash Incorporated. Um, and as the other two gentlemen have spoken about, um, we currently do operate here in the Imperial County. We're a professional state legal tax paying sellers permit holding cannabis delivery service here in the Imperial County. We are local um, El Centro residents. Um, in regards to the Calexico aspect, we feel, and by we I mean as in Headstash and then also as in um, cannabis patients in general, um, Headstash alone has approximately 800 registered patients. And that's just our one delivery service out of the 20, as Jim had spoken. So um, simple math problem, just, and that's just on our delivery service. Um, we would love to have a business license once it become available in a city here in the Imperial County. Love. I guarantee we would be first in line to apply for that, to, to follow fire regulation, police regulation, state law, across the board. Um, now I, we understand there's gonna be a huge checklist involved in that, and that's an exciting aspect of it. Um, in regards to safety, in regards to weighing, um, all of those details would come into play. Um, unfortunately, the Imperial County has a lot of um, cancer patients, PTSD, um, anxiety, eating disorders, you name it. Unfortunately, there is a need for medical cannabis here in the county. Um, was that for me? Was there a notice? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, unfortunately, there is a need for that here. Um, now, in regards to um, Calexico and the amendment um, to, to theirs, um, we feel as though that would be a huge benefit for the city of Calexico as well as for the cannabis patients. How it benefits Calexico is easy on regards to the tax revenue. Not only would it be the tax revenue, you would be able to um, decide your own percentage as well. The excise tax, I believe, uh, cities are doing approximately 5%. That would be city revenue. On top of that would be the rental of, if it were to be an office space, for example, the rental aspect, the um, bringing in more employment, um, using more utilities here in the city, for example, food, gas stations, um, um, just as examples. Um, we would be absolutely willing to sit down with any of you council members um, who would have any questions or would be interested in finding out more information as well too. Um, again, thank you again for allowing me to speak and um, we look forward to seeing what the city of Calexico decides. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you so much. I'm going to ask this. Being that I think that all of us have the opportunity to speak and that um, this is our last item, it is discussion only, I want to ask, do you guys think it'll be fair, being that we go over this issue all the time anyway, I think that this is a little off into a different direction of what we've been at before. If we can limit ourselves to three minutes each, that way we can get out of here That's fair. in For a reasonable sure. amount of time. We can actually do two minutes. Oh, all right. Let's do 30 so seconds. I know that probably the proponents here are Mr. Hodge and Mr. Um, Real, so we'll provide you first the two first minutes. Go ahead. <coughs> Okay, um, so this item was brought um, to the city of Calexico by me and Mr. Hodge. Um, and uh, reason being is because uh, obviously in the past the city of Calexico now has an ordinance for cultivation, um, testing, transportation, and distribution of uh, cannabis um, for, um, for sale outside of the city limits. And so, you know, uh, the, the council approved that and at the time, um, I think that the, the delivery dispensary model uh, was, was something that the city wasn't interested in or we weren't looking at. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on what side of the, of the fence you're on, um, the county of Imperial um, has now been uh, very bullish and uh, has allowed pretty much the same thing we have, cultivation, distribution, transportation, and manufacturing, plus a um, open door uh, dispensary and a number of uh, what are called virtual delivery uh, stores. Now, um, the reason we brought it up, or I, I wanted to bring it up to the council is for us to start looking at, again, it's not about if you are for or against uh, um, the cannabis industry or you believe in it or you don't, um, that's, that's personal. I, I personally believe that it does if there's 800 patients uh, for one store and there's 20 stores, there must be at least 10,000 people in this valley that use it, whether, uh, and most of it is a medicinal uh, medicinal because they have a card. Uh, but we need to understand that Prop 64, Prop 64 that passed now it makes it legally recreationally, which means that how many people right now don't have their card that are possibly uh, using it for fun instead of drinking or whatever. And, and so I want this council to understand that whether we like it or not, cannabis is being delivered to our residents right now by 20 dis deliveries in the county and, and will continue to be delivered. Um, and so the, the, the shift is if the county is allowing it and other cities are now allowing the delivery and the open door uh, dispensaries, that this council start looking at, again, it's discussion, uh, but this council starts looking at um, what are we going to do when the county or other cities start delivering into the city of Calexico, making hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe millions, and we're not receiving the tax money from it? Okay. So, Mr. Hodge, you want to add anything? Um, Two minutes. I just think that, um, you know, and I had said a while back that um, we were not going to have dispensaries. I didn't think we would. But... Um, I'm very much for economic growth and uh, the amount of money that is estimated that it would bring in could do a whole lot for the city, a whole lot for the employees in the city. And uh, morally, I don't really take a stance. I believe in the science and the medical uh, benefits of cannabis. Uh, that's my stance. And so I think that uh, it's a greater good than a greater evil. And especially economically, it would have a multiplying effect. And uh, it's inevitable. It is inevitable. Uh, uh, repeating what Mandy said, like it or not, it's, it's inevitable. It's just one of these things that uh, we could maybe temporarily put a hold on. but. Uh, it's going to be, it's, it's something that's going to be a staple of the future for our society. And it, there's a lot of people suffering that can benefit from it. And uh, so I do, I do support it this time. I'm, I'm open to uh, public input in a, in a democratic way. Um, if, if that's necessary or uh, some other council uh, members feel that that's necessary. But um, that's my say on it right now. 
Can I have 10 seconds um, and just add no, something no, real no. quick? Let's go ahead and do it this way. I can, I can go. I, 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 I just don't think at this time the city is ready for a dispensary. We have the people develop, delivering, and we, we, we don't need to draw more to, to uh, other elements of people hanging around dispensaries and giving it a, a bad look. Uh, I think what we have in place is going to generate enough money for us to start. We don't need to be doing a uh, local dispensary. I just don't think uh, the citizens would want that. That's just my take. So currently, I'm not in favor. We should put it to a vote, okay. to the Thank voters. You. Thank you. Um, Mr. Escobar. Uh, a word was used, and I love that word. It's called bold. Besides behoove, I love bold. <laughs> and I think we were bold by approving the wholesale cultivation and distribution. And I think we have multiple projects in place that in the next 12 to 18 months are gonna come to fruition and generate hundreds of thousands of dollars to the city, maybe more. Keep my fingers crossed, because I know there's some barriers to entry, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. So I think we are bold, and I think we are gonna see the benefits from a revenue standpoint. Having said that, there's a saying that says, you gotta walk before you run got to crawl before you walk. And I think that's what we're doing. We can't jump two or three hurdles. Let's jump one hurdle at a time. We jumped a major hurdle by allowing the cultivation and distribution of wholesale, not retail, wholesale. And this is not a moral issue. This is a revenue issue. And I'm salivating at what we could do from both a wholesale and a retail standpoint. But again, we got to walk before we run. We got to crawl before we walk. We're walking right now. We can, I suggest that we look at this next year. Once we have our first two, three, four uh, operations in order from a wholesale distribution standpoint, and then we can look at it, we can get public input. At the end of the day, we're all community advocates. We all live in Calexico, and we should all have a say. And personally speaking, I'm salivating at the additional revenues it can bring, but the community as a whole should have an input as to where we're gonna go and I am a community advocate, and I would support this, but I would not support this at this time. Thank you. Well, my comment is, as, uh, as part of what we got going on here, I don't believe, and I've said it since the beginning, that even with the bold um, opinion that we got going on here, but I do wanna make a, a comment to the, those present here that we do not forget, as a community, that we do need to be respected as uh, the process is, is going along. And it's hard to not notice that you have other cities around the city of Calexico who have had up until now, in my comments and, and in viewing their agendas and the activity that has occurred in the last almost year, that uh, I think they counted eight community meetings, not that your group, the proponents of this um, industry that sits here and, and provides their uh, version of, of the, the support of the project, um, we have a different job. We need to know if we're ready for you. And I think that that's probably what you're hearing right now is that the city of Calexico does not have to um, abide by any California regulations if that city does not want that project for its city. You can say no to these things. Proposition uh, 64 is a prop that covers all of California, but the cities do have the ability to say no. However, I think that the most important thing before that is listening to the community's opinion. We have been advanced and very bold to have completely ignored the community for about eight months, but um, I do want this council to realize that if we go anywhere further in anything, it's time to talk to our community because if our communities around us have done it eight times already, and I'm not sure if your company is participating <coughs> in that kind of thing, but uh, I look at our agenda and I haven't seen the city of Calexico provide not one community um, supportive information to the community. We haven't looked at fee structures but we're saying we're gonna make a lot of money. There's a lot of questions here. And I think it's very unfair and unwise to keep proceeding on these kind of bold activities and not respect your community and their opinion. Um, we have gone through a lot as a community on the border. Um, we live a different life and that's probably why you know and you're gonna hear that um, the leaders of this city, some of us are, are hardcore about doing the next step that is being looked at, but many of us are taking precaution because we know where our city has been and we're just not ready. Um, we're not, because we're not modern people, and you guys know because I've told you before, I'm a 15-year cancer survivor. And so if you're gonna tell anyone what it's like to have cancer, I know so. 
So the benefits of what it may be medicinally, that's great. But each city has different needs and different circumstances. And I hope that when I make my comments, I'm being very clear. I don't want to be offensive because I'm a modern woman. However, I know my community and I know that uh, the decisions that have to be made here are unique in every aspect that we do. So thank you for the discussion. And if we need I to have continue. a question for legal. Um, May I? Sure. Well, thank you for the um, discussion, though. I just wanted to say real quickly, um, after this, then we will go into the formality of what we're here for also is uh, the good stuff. But this is good stuff, too, of course. But it's a little more difficult to easily continue with these kinds of processes if we're not being fair to our community. So that's my point. I also want to be quick because I think everybody probably needs a drink after this meeting. But um, uh, Carlos, uh, the reason why this was brought up and um, correct me if I'm wrong, does the council, because of the, if the council is not going to allow the delivery or uh, aspect, because I think uh, Councilman Pacheco was stating uh, as far as uh, dispensaries, but this particular, uh, particular was brought for the delivery aspect. Um, we then, the council should then, or the majority of the council should then put a moratorium to make sure that um, companies cannot come into the city and deliver. We had it. No, there's, there, there needs to be another moratorium it done on delivery. Um, Correct? No, well, so, our current you guys need, so that, so that uh, again, the council says we don't want deliveries in the city. Correct? So then there needs to be a moratorium to stop everybody from delivering in the city. Correct? Okay. So, yeah. so we could just I, do I have a second? Uh, do what, when you guys want to make a motion to put a moratorium yeah, the, on the deliveries? The ordinance, and I'll look at it again following the discussion, but the ordinance would prohibit any type of other no, sort of cannabis to use to unless we allow it's, it. There's future agenda items. Um, I could put a future agenda we, item. We've, uh, uh, you know, we, initially we prohibited oh. initially any sort of cannabis use. We went ahead and amended it to allow cultivation and related manufacturing, distribution, and the like. Currently, unless... Um, so it's currently prohibited. Um, if we wanted to allow, we'd have to amend our ordinances. So, so, so currently it's prohibited. So currently, January first, somebody mm -hmm. comes and delivers in the city, they can be arrested for it. Tech, well, well, what would happen is, um, in order to allow deliveries within a jurisdiction, we need to allow them within the city. So that's what I'm saying. So it's illegal. It so would they be would be illegal arrested. if anybody was delivering or having a retail within the city. It would be illegal, and then at that point it becomes. A, so uh, we don't have to do a moratorium. It's already illegal. Correct. We, Correct. At that point, it would become it would be an enforcement issue. And okay. um, as we see right now, there's folks that are operating already. I mean, it, it essentially. That Correct. So, okay. who know? I'm not sure if they would keep operating so, or not, but okay. they, they so would. So the city, the Colegio PD can't enforce that then, correct? Yeah. They would, they would be like an illegal business. Okay. Open I just want to make sure if we needed uh, a moratorium okay. or not. No. Clarification, they right. can enforce. PD can enforce. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. All right. PD, code okay. enforcement. Um, okay, no. We can take civil actions, correct. All right. We all got it all over the system? All right. Future agenda? We have a future agenda item. Gentlemen, um, that due to the circumstances I ask, can we not have to do that part and, and uh, replace it with what we'd like to do for Mr. Villa at this moment? Council, is that okay? Yeah. You can always do your two. Right. All righty. Mr. Villa, this is your moment. We have come to the day of not being able to challenge you and Stress you out and, uh, <laughs> and and make your grays come out even more. Um, it was fun, it was, and um, I think that between you and I, uh, the arm wrestling thing, you know, I won't tell anybody you lost, but that's okay, you <laughs> lost. But um, no hard feelings. Uh, I think what it is is uh, an experience to understand that there's people that come across these kinds of jobs, and they know they do it for a certain reason. And they're given opportunities to prove that, and I think we proved it pretty much. And so that's to be highly respected. My, as the mayor, I say that sincerely. There was a lot of stuff we had to do and a lot of hard work. We had a lot of fun, a lot of colorful conversations, but it was all well worth it. At the end of the day, our community is that much better. So those are my words. If you guys want to say anything to him, I want to read this real quick right before. The city of Calexico. Imperial County, California, presents to Armando G. Villa in appreciation for your leadership and service as city manager of the city of Calexico, such a short time, from June 2016 to December 2017. Calexico City Council, Mario Turtado Mayor, Luis Pacheco, Mayor Pro Tem, Jesus Eduardo Escobar, Council Member, Bill Hodge, Council Member, 
and Armando Real, council member. December 6, 2017. So grateful for the opportunity that the city council gave me to be part of part of my city. I, as you know, I grew up here, was in <coughs> high school here, and I wanted to be I wanted to be you know part of, of the solution. We did have a lot of challenges at the beginning, but I think you know over the last year and a half we we've uh, we've improved. We we evolved into a really really super high-performing organization given the limitations and you know case in point you know our council is working together I'm really happy extremely happy with the decisions you made over the last year I feel that the city is moving forward I'm not I'm not leaving uh, feeling empty I, I think I'm leaving feeling content that there's a plan in place and that the council chose very wisely with the leadership that we have now to continue to move the city forward so I'm extremely honored to receive this. You don't know how much it means to me. It means a lot. Um, and um, I, I'm going to miss, I mean, I'm going to, the council, I'm going to miss our meetings on Wednesday morning and, yeah. and the menudo. And um, uh, I'm going to miss you all. Kevin. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. This meeting has ended.